One of the other interesting capabilities of case classes <coughs> is the ability to use them as patterns. So up till this point, we've seen a few things that we can use as patterns. We've used tuples as patterns, and we've used lists, and to a certain extent, arrays as patterns. Case classes create patterns for us. Now, this is one of the things that you get by calling a class a case class. To help illustrate this, let's go ahead and let's say, I don't know, okay, so Scala, let's create a whole bunch of points. So here's one illustration of it. Val points equals array dot fill. And let's make, I'm just going to go with 20 points. Each one is going to be made by calling point 3D. And I'm going to give it three random values. Okay. Nope, and I need another close parentheses. Uh, oh, I need to load. Colon load case classes dot scala. And then we can call that. And I have a set of points. If I wanted to run through all of these points, I could do something like this. For point x, y, z in points and let's just yield the maybe the magnitude of it math dot squirt of x times x plus y times y plus z times z now before I hit enter on this note this right here is the pattern so except I left off the 3d part so that would not run 3d so it has the name of the case class and then parentheses and then things that match each of the arguments here. Now, these are called x, y, and z. Right now I've called these x, y, and z. That does not have to match. These are just whatever variable names you wanted. I could have called them a, b, c, and then I'd have to use call these things down here, a, b, c. But it allows a convenient way to unpackage the fields of a case class. So that gave me the magnitudes of each of those different points. You can also make it so that there are restrictions on it. Remember, one of the powerful things about the for loop is it only matches things that, that uh, are going to agree with certain restrictions. You can also decide to not pull out certain things by putting underscores instead of variable names. Let's say, for example, we had some students. We don't have a list or an array of students, but if I did, I could run through the students and for each one do a pattern match on student, I probably care about their name, so I'll bind that to a variable in. And let's say all that I was interested in was seeing assignment grades. Okay, well, then I wouldn't care about the test grades. I might bind a variable A to the assignment grades. And then I don't care about the quiz grades either. So that would be one possible pattern that I could use. So that N gets the name, A gets the assignments, and I just kind of skip over or throw away the other information. I could also be more specific about this. I could say, well, I only want to care about students who have three assignments. Well, in that case, I could make this be a list of A1, A2, A3, and then any students that had fewer than or more than three assignment grades would not match this pattern, in which case the for loop would skip over them. The ones that had three grades, the for loop would execute and it would bind into their name and A1, A2, and A3 to each of their three different grades. Okay, so another thing that's happening here that we haven't seen before, this is actually a nested pattern because we have the case class pattern for student over the whole thing, but we've put inside of it another pattern, in this case a pattern for a list of three elements. So you have lots of power with patterns that we're only beginning to see and hopefully this helps to illustrate some of that. It also shows how you can use case classes as patterns in for loops, in variable declarations, in uh, match statements. So any place that we've talked about previously where you could use a pattern, you can use a case class pattern on it, and it, it adds a lot of expressivity to what you can do with your case classes.